In my practice, I find a lot of uh, diabetes, or at least uh, significant insulin resistance, that's been neglected um, for a long time. My uh, patients often get mad at their previous docs, and <clears throat> I understand that, but I also understand the doctor's perspective as well. Uh, there are a couple of really good reasons why doctors tend to move slowly with uh, diabetes and insulin resistance. One is that uh, the ADA moves slowly. If you look at the, um, <clears throat> the recommendations, the standards for ADA uh, for treatment, for at least the A1C goals, they basically say, usually say 7. Uh, 6.5 or less is an exception for them. And for older patients with more disease, um, they say eight. Um, why do they do that? Well, <clears throat> there's actually a good reason for that as well. And we're going to cover that today in uh, a couple of studies, advanced and accord study. Um, <clears throat> there's also another reason why docs tend to be very conservative and move slowly. Um, Drugs, as you'll see in these next two studies, drugs alone are not the answer. Lifestyle is critical, no matter how advanced your diabetes. And um, clearly, if you want to minimize your risk long term for uh, disability and death, heart attack, stroke, cardiovascular inflammation, you need to keep your A1C down. But doing it with drugs alone is dangerous. So, <clears throat> um, those of you who are interested in the studies that created this, uh, a lot of this fear and concern about going deeper with uh, um, A1C control, uh, we'll cover that in just a minute. But first, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E -E and this is the Prevention Channel. I, um, <clears throat> we're, what we do is we're working to help you understand the science behind uh, medicine some of the uh, science behind medical standards, some of the reasons why you may be frustrated with your doc, and some of the things that you can do about it in terms of um, managing your own uh, life better. Um, <clears throat> there were three studies that were published in, uh, uh, in the New England Journal, actually two that uh, were studies, and the, other, the third was a synopsis of the two. The ACCORD trial, the, uh, the advanced trial, and the analysis of the two. So this is the uh, advanced trial. Uh, intensive blood glucose control and vascular outcomes in patients with type 2 diabetes. Again, New England Journal, 2008. And <clears throat> I'm going to say this a couple of times. These were like the big definitive trials because they showed problems Nobody, uh, it made a significant change in medicine. It basically said, we got to back off. Um, and we ended up throwing the baby out with the bathwater because uh, dogs just routinely do not want to uh, focus on lower A1C goals for their patients, despite the fact that it clearly does help uh, long-term, microvascular for short-term as well as long-term, and macrovascular for long-term. But again, we didn't realize, or most docs don't realize, that the dangers inherent appear to be with uh, trying to manage diabetes with drugs instead of lifestyle. So that's the advanced uh, trial. Here's the, um, <clears throat> the ACCORD trial. Again, um, New England Journal, uh, June 12, 2008. And uh, again, I'll put the, um, the links below the video, as I usually do. Here's a third um, uh, it, this is an editorial. This is a third article in the same uh, I think it was the same journal. It may have been a week later. Um, it, intensive, and I put intensive in quotes because their goal is uh, 6.5 in one of them in the advanced trial and 6 in the, uh, the ACCORD trial. Um, <clears throat> and again, that's in comparison to what uh, thousands, tens of thousands of diabetics uh, say when they want to be in the 5% club. 
They want to be below 6%. And unfortunately, most of their doctors tell them that's dangerous based on these two trials, and especially on the ACCORD trial. Okay, just a couple of things that came uh, that he brought up. The UK, um, the UK perspective trial basically showed no uh, decrease in cardiovascular risk. The DCCT trial and the EDIC trial, uh, these were trials that preceded these. They showed no immediate decrease in cardiovascular risk. But they began to see a study signal here. As they followed these patients later on, they did see long-term decrease in cardiovascular risk. So there was still some interest about, can we drop uh, hemoglobin A1C and get decreased cardiovascular risk? Why are we so focused on, on cardiovascular risk? Because again, that's what kills patients. 80% of, uh, of the risk associated with diabetes is associated with heart attack, stroke, um, again, cardiovascular inflammation. So the, the question at that time around 2008 was, well, if we lower the hemoglobin A1C, will we get a better long-term outcome? In both of these, they saw decreased microvascular damage. But let's talk about the cardiovascular damage. Um, I've referred to it in just a minute, but let's again get a little bit deeper in terms of the studies. Uh, in the ACCORD study, as I said, the goal was less than 6. In the advanced study, it was less than 6.5. In both uh, studies, they had about a third of the patients with uh, significant uh, cardiovascular uh, inflammation and disease already starting. So these were uh, both groups that had uh, significant uh, progression of their disease. In the ACCORD study, they used glycolyzide, which is a sulfonylurea, and insulin a lot. They had no restrictions on use of that, and again, there was a lot of that. What we have found since then is that the combination of sulfonylureas and insulins creates significant risk for hypoglycemia and cardiovascular death. Uh, rosiglitazone, there's a, there was, in the advanced study, there was a lot of use of rosiglitazone, which is one of the uh, thialazine diones, uh, like pioglitazone. Uh, rosiglitazone was found later on in a meta-analysis to be associated with increased cardiovascular risk. So in both of these studies, there was heavy reliance on drug uh, drugs or drug combinations that are no longer recommended because of their increase in cardiovascular risk. And we are now surprised and we are now still following the advice of the Accord and Advanced Studies saying we don't want to drop the A1C too low because it's cardiovascular risk. That's when obviously I have some skepticism about the outcome on that. But I still don't think medications are, the, are the, the major answer. They are a huge help and um, a huge component for a lot of advanced diabetics. But the vast majority of people are not that advanced. The vast majority of people um, will never even need uh, insulin. It's lifestyle. So, in both studies, speaking of lifestyle, how much emphasis did they have in both of these studies on lifestyle? These are uh, the editorialist's quotes in the New England Journal, not mine. No emphasis on lifestyle. No emphasis on lifestyle in either of these studies. So, again, as I mentioned, uh, both studies showed decreased microvascular damage because they both... Uh, significantly decrease the A1C in their patients. Um, both studies, uh, ACCORD showed an actual increase in uh, cardiovascular deaths and unclassified deaths, and the advanced uh, study did not show a decrease in um, cardiovascular deaths. So again, the outcome from that was, well, we don't want to go lower on our A1C goals, like I showed you with the um, ADA standards. Maybe we need to take another study and focus on lifestyle and try that again. 
let's uh, let beyond lifestyle. Let's look at a couple of other things. How many just took aspirin? How many took were on statins? How many were managing their blood pressure? Uh, in the Accord study, three quarters took aspirin. Eighty-eight uh, percent took a statin, and in the advanced study, only half took either of those. In the Accord study, there was uh, what almost ten pound weight gain on average. So part of that was the fact that they were taking the uh, insulin. Insulin can cause weight gain. And again, underlines the fact that these studies used drugs, not lifestyle, to achieve their uh, lower A1C goals. So what did the editorialist say? Basically, he said, uh, maybe the goal should be 7.0. Now, others like myself and uh, Jenny Rule would say lower can be safe. The 5.6 uh, and below can be safe. You just have to be uh, careful about who you're doing it with, and you need to use, focus on lifestyle as opposed to, to drugs. Uh, and it clearly results in long-term safety because of decreased risk for heart attack and stroke. Um, back to the author of the editorial. Less than 10% of diabetics currently make the easier goals. In other words, there's another very strong reason why your doctor is very conservative. It's not just because of the ADA goals and standards. It's also because 99% of the patients coming in to see him neglect their diet, have a BMI in the high 20s or 30s, um, they're overweight, they don't exercise, and so again, when you get frustrated with your doc, please have a little more patience. This is a cultural issue. It's not just the docs, it's the patients as well. So back to the editorial. He's recommending to the docs, focus on smoking cessation, diet, exercise, aspirin, statin, uh, lowering the blood pressure. Uh, those were both all neglected in the Accord and Advanced Trials. In other words, don't just rely on medication. And my editorial comment would be, I obviously agree. Thank you for your interest.